Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Getting Started with Digitising using the MySonet Embroidery software. This video is one of two films looking at pattern fill. This is part one where I'm going to show you how to easily change properties of pattern fill. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of MySonet, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our future episodes. In this film, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software installed, but the principles will be exactly the same if you're on a Mac. I'm in the digitising module and you can see that I've created a series of square boxes using pattern fill. So how do you go about changing the characteristics of the pattern fill? Let me show you. So I've selected on the film strip the object that I want to change and I'm going to do a right click. Now at the bottom here I've got two choices. If I was actually looking to change the characteristics of all the boxes I could do that by clicking on global properties and I would change them all at the same time. But in actual fact I only want to change the characteristics of the object that I've chosen so I'm going to click on properties and this opens up the fill area and line box and you can see the default pattern here is three. If I click on the pull down arrow I can actually scroll through and there are 279 different fill patterns that I could choose from. There's all sorts of stuff, waves, hearts, animals, circles, um, just lots and lots of stuff. There's even one with a snowman. Um, but today I am going to work with this hearts pattern. Now you can see I've got a little sort of green box showing that I'm choosing that one and the number 109. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see I've got 109 up here. Now if I click apply, you can see it's actually applied it there. And that's a top tip. I would say always just have a look. Click the apply box before closing the dialog box window down. Um, and it might be you say, mm, actually, I'm not sure about that pattern. So again, I'm going to go and it might be an actual fact. I go with um, another heart pattern. Again, I'm going to click apply. And again, it's changed it. Now it might be that I'm not happy with that angle. So you can see that the thumbnail is suggesting that the stitches are going to be running across in a horizontal fashion. And if I wanted to, I could increase this angle. Let's go up to say 15. And again, I'm going to click apply. And it's changed that. Now if I wanted to, I could shut the window down by clicking OK and actually using this little orange handle on the object circle to turn the uh, my pattern fill whichever way that I want. And that's a really useful tool, particularly because sometimes we don't know the exact angle that we actually need to do it visually. For instance, let's say you have two areas of fill butting up next to each other and you want the pattern to go one way on one and the other on the other. That's that's a really useful tool, that little orange handle. So let me show you another way of opening up the fill area and line box. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click directly on the box below and then do a right click and automatically the fill area and line box has opened up and that's a really useful quick shortcut. So let's talk about what's going on with the density down here. The default is two. Now the higher the number, the more open your stitchery will be. Why might that be an issue? Well, it might be that, for instance, that um, at the density of two, it, that might just be too dense. It might be making your embroidery quite hard and solid, where you want something with, perhaps with a bit more drape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my density up. So in this case, I'm just going to go to four. And just like before, I'm going to click apply. And for instance, you can still see that we've got an area that's kind of working as a block, but you can see that it's a little less dense. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to repeat that exercise, opening it up on the box below, 
but in this case I'm actually going to open it up to 10 and then I'm going to click apply and you can see we've got all, all sorts of stuff going on here now some of what's going on here is because we've got underlay stitching underlay is like a support network of stitching that the software puts down first whenever it's doing a fill so I'm going to click none and again click apply and that's kind of cleared most of it up but what I would say let me show you a better way in a moment if you wanted an area of sort of open grid work just so that you know the compensation is about that sometimes uh, when you're sewing very densely um, your f area of embroidery can actually shrink because the tension in the threads pull it together and actually putting um, uh, a value in there in the compensation will make your embroidery slightly bigger so it doesn't shrink down too small but just so that you know I very rarely change either the underlay or the compensation settings when I'm stitching out unless for some reason there really is a problem and that I'm gonna have to uh, change it but particularly if you're getting started I really wouldn't worry about that so again I'm gonna click OK I'm going to choose the box next to it and open up the uh, fill area. I'm just going to move it slightly out of the way because I want to talk about the gradient. I'm going to check the gradient box and I'm going to choose single colour gradient. And what's going on here, this little blue box is telling me my coloured stitch, the density is at 2. But the gradient where it's opening up at the moment is the density of eight and I'm going to click apply so you can see what I mean so you can see that we've got a little bit of area that's just opening up here so what I'm going to do the black box round here is showing me that this is the active area I'm actually going to check on the eight and increase this to 30 and then I'm going to click apply it's it's opening up a bit more but the top half isn't really changing and that's because we've got this additional marker up here that if I slide up and I'm being quite dramatic I'm going to slide it all the way up and again click apply you can actually see we've got this area opening up and if I click apply I can then use my handle to actually rotate this around to choose it you know and you can get some lovely dramatic effects and again just like before I'm going to uh, select another box and um, the fill area and line box open I'm going to go gradient single color and can you remember I was talking about um, uh, how we could do a better version of this uh, box down here so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up my fill pattern again uh, I'm going to go all the way to 40 but what I'm then going to do is I'm going to drag all my markers right the way up to here and then I'm going to click apply and you can see that I've got this um, uh, area of fill opening up I'm just going to click OK and what I'm then going to do in actual fact I am going to click and drag my start point to another of the four nodes that are in here so left click and pop it over there and you can see that's actually looking pretty good we haven't got as much nonsense as we have on there and if I wanted to I can like before rotate that pattern round and I think you'll agree with me that's looking pretty good one last thing again selecting opening up I'm going to drag my fill area and line box out of the way we're going to go gradient but this time we're going to go multicolor gradient I'm going to click on this little yellow box the default is always yellow and brown but I want to kind of keep this together so I'm going to double click on that I'm going to choose the blue quick blue which is the soldier blue and I'm going to change the brown 
to let's go with fuchsia and click OK and again I'm going to click apply and you can see that the the pink is quite dominant in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my top marker so we can see a bit more blue I'm actually going to decrease my density to uh, goodness me to about five and let's have a look at how that's looking and you can see that that's actually beginning to look really quite interesting but it might be you say well actually that's great but can we have another color in here so I'm going to put another marker in and it's put this marker in here in actual fact what I am going to do is I'm going to change this color so double click on it let's go with um, a pale turquoise and I'm going to click OK on that and you can see that we're actually beginning to get something quite interesting if I feel I'm not getting enough blue I can open that dialog box back up and I could move this pointer along up here or indeed at the bottom so that I've got a bit more blue click apply let's have a look at how that's looking if I'm happy with that then I can click OK so hopefully you can see how easy it is to change some of the fill pattern qualities within the MySonet embroidery software. Please look out for part two where I'm going to show you even more ways of changing fill patterns within the MySonet embroidery software. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Happy sewing!